Hi and welcome to Program Analysis. In this lecture of the course, we will look into path profiling, which in short is an efficient approach to tell which paths through a program are executed. We'll see why this is an interesting approach, um, what algorithm you can use to solve this question, and then we'll also look into some applications of this idea of path profiling. This lecture consists of three videos, and this one is the first of these three. So here's an overview of the three videos that we have in this lecture. So in the first one, um, I'll give an introduction into the topic and will motivate why this idea of path profiling is interesting at all. And we'll also look into some of the challenges and we will see why a naive approach that you might come up with if you maybe think about this problem for a few minutes does actually not work that well. Then in the second video, which will probably take most time, we will look into a very beautiful algorithm to address the path profiling problem. And that's the so-called Wall-Laros algorithm. And we will go through that algorithm um, step by step using an example. And then finally, in the third video, um, we look at the generalization of the algorithm that we talk about in the second part of the lecture. And we'll also look into some applications of this overall idea of path profiling to see where it can actually be um, used. As usual, everything I'm saying here is based on some other literature. Um, in particular, there is this one paper on efficient path profiling that describes the algorithm we are covering here and that is at the core of this whole lecture. But there are also some other papers that you may want to look at um, that basically generalize this initial idea or show one of the many applications of path profiling. All right, so let's get started by defining what this problem of path profiling actually is. So in short, what path profiling wants to do is to, given a program and some input that makes this program run, count how often every path through a function or more generally to a program is executed. Um, why is this interesting? There are many, many different applications. So I'm listing only three of them here and we look at another one in the third video of the lecture. So one application of this idea of path profiling is so-called profile-directed uh, compiler optimization where the compiler does not optimize the program ahead of time without having seen any runs of the program, but actually looks at an execution profile that tells you something about how this program executes and then uses this to optimize the program. And specifically, a path profile can, for example, be used to optimize those part of a program um, that are um, most, most relevant and that are, that are executed most often. Um, beyond automated, automated compiler optimizations, you can of course do the same um, through manual performance tuning. So if a developer wants to know which parts of a program are most worth to be optimized, then one way to um, answer that question is to run path profiling, which tells you which path through a function or maybe an entire program um, are executed the most. And then this is where you should probably spend your time on if you want to tune performance. And then beyond performance, of course, you can also use path profiling um, in testing, for example, um, to find out which paths are not yet tested. So if you know which paths are executed and how often they are executed, you also know which paths through a function or maybe an entire program um, are not yet tested at all or maybe not tested well enough and should um, get a little bit more testing time. Now, if you hear this for the first time, this idea of counting how often every path through a function or a program is executed, um, this may sound like a simple problem, but doing this um, is actually not so easy. And the reason are um, three challenges that I'm listing here. So one is that we would like to have an approach that imposes low runtime overhead. Of course, if you have all resources of the world, it's relatively easy to come up with an approach, but in practice, you do not want to slow down the program too much when you do this path profiling. And doing this um, uh, whole uh, analysis with low runtime overhead is actually uh, a pretty interesting challenge. The second um, challenge that, um, that needs to be addressed here is accuracy. So what we want to have is a precise path profile that really tells us how often every path has been executed. And we do not want to use any heuristics or approximations here. Of course, you could take a different design decision and say it's okay to use heuristics, it's okay to do approximations. Um, that's also a valid choice, but what we look at here um, aims at precise profiles that do not approximate um, the correct profile. And then finally, um, of course, there may be infinitely many paths through program, in particular because we have loops and also recursive calls, which essentially mean that there are cycles in the control flow path uh, graph. 
And how to deal with these potentially infinitely many paths is uh, part of the challenge of addressing this path profiling problem. To make all of this more concrete, um, we'll use a running example throughout this lecture, which looks as follows. So we look at this example not by looking at source code, but by directly looking at the control flow graph. And the, sim the reason is simply that you've by now seen enough um, examples where we went from source code to a control flow graph. So I'm assuming that um, you, you know how to do this. So the graph that we look at looks like this. So we have these basic blocks, or they could also be statements that I'll call A, B, C, D, E, F. And then we have edges that tell us which statement or basic block may be executed um, after another. So B may be executed after A, but also C may be executed after A. So there's some kind of conditional. Then after B, C may be executed. Then there is D, which may be executed both after B and C. And then down here we have, again, this kind of situation where after D, E, and F may be executed, and after E, we may also um, get to F. So assuming that A is our entry node and that F is our exit node, um, you can now think about which different path through this uh, control flow graph exist. And let's just draw a little table um, to do this. So I'll give each of them a number, and then I'll list the different nodes that a path goes through. And what we want to know at the end, and that's the problem of um, path profiling, is what is the frequency of each of these paths? So given an input that may go through this um, piece of code that is shown here in the control flow graph multiple times, how often is each of these paths actually executed? So this is the big question that at the end we hope to answer through path profiling. So let's now go through all the possible paths one by one. And I'm starting with the path that um, goes from A to C to D to F. So basically like this. So that's one of them. Then there's another one that goes from A to C to D, but then also goes to E before going to F. So this one will look like this. And then, of course, we can also um, take the turn from A to B at the beginning. So, for example, there's one path that goes from A to B and then to C, then to D, and then to F. So this will look like this. Then there's yet another one, number three that also goes from A to B, then also to C, then also to D, but then also goes through E before ending in F. So this will look like that. And then yet another one that takes a short path because it goes from A to B directly to D and then to F. So like this. And finally, there's one left that we haven't covered yet, which is A, B, D, E, and F. So like this. And now given these six different paths that exist, um, if we execute this function or this piece of code that is represented here multiple times, the question is, how often is each of those executed? And this is the question that we want to answer here. So looking at this problem, one idea that you might have is what um, is called edge profiling. So this approach basically starts by looking at each of the edges in the control flow graph and by counting how often each of these edges is executed. So in practice, if you would implement this, you would basically instrument every branching point um, in the code. So that you then know whenever there's more than one, one, one than more edge that you could take, which of these is actually taken, so that you at the end know how often each of the control flow graph edges is indeed executed. And then giving these individual edge counts, one could 
computer maybe estimate the most frequent path by basically following the most frequent edge all the time. So we would start at our start node and then whenever there's more than one edge, we would follow that edge that has um, the higher frequency until we reach the exit node and then assume that this is the path that um, is also the most frequent one. So let's illustrate this idea of edge profiling with our running example again. So this is the same control flow graph that we've seen before. And now let's assume that we have computed um, how often each of the edges in this graph is taken and that we basically have um, associated a frequency value with each of these edges. So for the example, let's say that this edge has been executed 120 times, this edge has been executed 150 times, which basically means the code has reached A 270 times and then 120 out of those it has um, continued with B and 150 out of those it has continued with C. Then let's say that um, 100 times we have seen this edge to be executed, 20 times that edge, 250 times this edge here, 160 for this edge, 110 here, and 160, the E2F edge. Now using this edge profiling um, idea, we could now try to answer the question, which of all these paths through the program is the most frequent one? And as I said, um, the idea here would be to um, basically look at um, uh, all nodes where we have more than one outgoing edge and then always take the edge that has the higher frequency. So we would start at A because that's the entry node. We can choose whether we go to B or C. Um, the edge from A to C has the higher frequency, so we would go to C. In C there's only one option, which is to go to D. In D we have two options again. We could go to E or to F. Um, based on the edge profiling idea, we assume that the edge with the higher frequency is taken, which would be the one that goes to E. And then from E, there's only one choice, which um, gives us this um, supposedly most frequent path, A, C, D, E, and F. So from the way I'm explaining this approach, you might already see that um, this may not be the correct um, way to actually do it. So um, if you're a bit skeptical, you may ask, well, really? Um, is this really the most frequent path and is this the only one possible correct solution here? And to um, answer that question, let's have a look at two different possible path profiles that may actually um, have happened. So in this table, you can now see again the six paths that we have already um, seen on the on the previous handwritten slide, where we um, yeah just list all the six ways to go from A to F. And now let's assume that we have executed our program where um, this control flow graph is part of um, two times, and that we have obtained with some approach that we do not yet um, uh, well that I haven't explained yet. Uh, let's assume that we have obtained the following path profiles. So in profile number one, we know that this very first path that goes from A to C to D to F has been executed 90 times. The second path has been executed 60 times. The third one, the ABCDF one, has never been executed. Um, the fourth one has been executed um, 100 times. And the last two, 20 and 0 times. Now this is one profile that we may have gotten um, by exercising this program with some inputs. And now let's say we have some other inputs and exercise the program again and then get some other profile uh, called profile 2. And again, um, I'm just giving um, some numbers here that we may have obtained um, in this profiling that again just tell us how often each of these um, paths have been executed. So now if you look carefully at these numbers and basically do the math, you will see that for each of these two profiles, both profile one and profile two, we would have or we could have gotten um, the blue frequencies of uh, edge executions. 
So both of these profiles are compatible with the edge uh, frequencies that, that are annotated here on this graph. But now if you look at um, the most frequent path that we see in these profiles, then you see that here for profile one, it's actually this one, A, B, C, D, E, F, <coughs> which is different from the one that we have seen up here. Whereas for profile two, the most frequent one is this one, A, C, D, F, which again is also different from this um, supposedly most frequent path. So the bottom line of this is basically that um, this idea of edge profiling, even though it sounds simple and maybe very efficient, um, doesn't really tell us um, the most frequent path, simply because the information that we are gathering is too local in a sense, and it doesn't tell us enough about the entire execution um, of the program and how it goes through this control flow graph. So um, getting back to this general algorithm of edge profiling, what we've basically seen in this example is that this idea of edge profiling fails to uniquely identify the most frequent path and may actually give us a wrong answer. So this is not the solution that we have been looking for. All right, and this is already the end of the first uh, video in this lecture on path profiling. You now know what the problem of path profiling actually is and you've at least seen now how to not solve it. So I hope you are now interested in seeing the second video where we will look at the Bolaros algorithm that will actually solve this problem of path profiling. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.